we have the onerous responsibility of uh, taking this uh, last session through and uh, uh, with, with, with heavy eyelids, uh, but a really a great session on the green technology. So we hope we'll, go, uh, we'll get forward with this. And about the, the youngsters and in, in green technology and youngsters anywhere, I would like to say that with, uh, with uh, great uh, leadership, we can always take any session and make anything possible. So we need uh, both gray hair as well as black hair and definitely need green technology. The way it's going, I think uh, this should all be green and nothing should be any other color. And that makes sense for, for a lot of things as, as, we, as we move forward. Uh, I, uh, I'll be looking at uh, the various uh, tools, uh, both in FTO and also some of the tools that are available in IP decision making. Uh, modern companies need to, uh, need to take advantage of several tools and decide their policies as they, as they move forward. I'll be uh, concentrating on, uh, on as, as, the, as, has been theme, I'll theme, as has been the theme of this conference, I'll be concentrating on uh, patents and uh, largely I'll be looking at uh, things from the perspective of Indian corporations and how Indian corporations can model themselves uh, to take on the changes in both the world scenario as well as the Indian scenario in times to come, probably say the next 10 years and how the policy should be modeled so as to take the initiatives and also have uh, requisite intellectual property to, uh, to take it forward. Now, uh, somebody, uh, we've discussed this yesterday uh, about uh, the need for innovation for Indian uh, businesses especially. When we see that the rate of evol evolution of the technology has been increasing, what happened um, a few years ago in 10 years is happening in six months. So the rate of evaluation of, 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 eva of evolution of technology is increasing and so is the need for evaluating technologies and choosing the right technologies so as to manage your budgets and manage your policies effectively and take uh, things in the right perspective. So companies need to, uh, to plan for future growth uh, keep in mind the lo lot of international trade that is going on. No company can live in its own cocoon. You cannot have your niche markets and be happy with it. You've got to globalize, go forward. And uh, with, with going forward, you've got to have tools uh, to protect uh, your intellectual property as well as commercialize your intellectual property as you move forward. You've also got to protect yourselves in as far as your technology is concerned because if somebody, if you've got a trade secret or if you've got a secret that you've, come, you've kept in your pocket and somebody else and, uh, comes in and starts making it and sues you for your own technology, then that's a problem. Uh, as somebody said yesterday that majority of uh, assets in, in developed economies are, are intellectual property assets or they're liquid assets, they're not, uh, you know, real assets. So intangible assets is something that is, uh, that, that, that uh, you know, companies in India have to be geared up for. Uh, traditionally, you know, we've not been, we've not been very IP friendly as, as a country. We've, we've believed in disseminating uh, our knowledge, traditional knowledge has been disseminated, let everybody use it. Uh, so, you know, it, it's not, it doesn't come, us, come to us naturally to protect uh, intellectual property and commercialize it. So uh, that's something that, that, that is still there in, in India, but you know, it needs to change as we are, as we are, uh, as we are integrating our economy with the, with the world. There is a, uh, as, as Dr. Mitra also pointed out, that there is a, a, a very solid absence of judgment law. I was looking at uh, judgment law regarding uh, Section 3K, uh, the software patenting, uh, where it says that software per se is, uh, is not patentable. Uh, there is absolutely no, litig no litigation, there is absolutely no judgment law, except for one small case where it was remanded back to the patent office for decision. So there is, uh, when it comes to intellectual property, uh, when it comes to patents specifically, there are some cases in trademarks, but when it comes to patents, uh, there is, uh, you know, a, a very less, uh, judge-made law which is available. Even in a recent case, the Supreme Court had, uh, had um, noticed that there is no, uh, the, that the trials are not going forward, they're not being decided finally, so there is no actual uh, decision in as far as the final suit is concerned. It is all, uh, it is all being decided at the preliminary injunction stage and, uh, and, and so, so the decisions are really, really not available for, uh, you know, examiners or for, 
for companies to take advantage of the or to, 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 to take appropriate measures in as far as protecting their intellectual property is concerned. So we, uh, you know, going by the judicial activism um, or going by the, the, going by the, uh, the realization that there is absence of judge-made law, uh, in, in the coming years we should expect some or we, uh, we have to expect some uh, decisions that need to come through. We've also largely uh, been an, an offline economy. We've, we've, we've not put, uh, uh, you know, all the patents are, are full text at least are not available online. So, uh, you know, um, in the, at least the Indian Patent Office, uh, so we need to make strides there. The markets are generally unregulated. Before launching a product, you don't need, in most uh, scenarios, you don't need uh, uh, a non-infringement opinion or a non-infringement analysis. So, uh, you know, those are, those are some of the realities. Uh, enforcement systems, of course, we've talked about, they're, uh, they're uh, extremely weak, both because of, judge, of, of absence of judge-made laws or, and also because of adherence to certain systems. Um, and, you know, specialized courts, tribunals, especially dealing with intellectual property infringement and also having technical competence to understand the niceties of, a, of at least the patent system are uh, not available at this stage. But as I said, there, is decision make, uh, there are recent decisions of the Honorable Supreme Court where, uh, where the, the courts have said that we need to get on with things and decide, uh, at least uh, get some final decisions and take some decisions in as far as the uh, intellectual property scenario is concerned. So, uh, so a as we move along, the, uh, you know, I, th this is how, how I constructed the next 10 years and extrapolated the realities. Uh, if, if you have to plan your IP policies, if you have to plan your, uh, your um, intellectual property for the, uh, for the next 10 years, you've got to have some of these things in mind. Uh, what if, uh, you know, and, and as we are moving forward, the way we are going forward, there may be and there is a need for special tribunals to be set up. Um, say in 10 years, uh, what if what you're doing right now, uh, there, there is some company comes up, comes up and says that your uh, technology that, you're, uh, that, that you've been using for all these years is subject to uh, intellectual property at my end. Uh, we, we've had some clients receive notices from, you know, when, when they've been doing their businesses for all these years. They've had uh, notices come in from huge companies who own uh, all those patent pools and come up and say that, you know, this is how uh, these, the, I have about X number of patents and, uh, and what you're doing is, is uh, infringing upon one, one of my portfolios, so come up, come up to me and take a license. So we've got to be ready for more such, uh, more such people coming in and, and saying that the traditional uh, use of, of technology that you've been doing for all these years is, uh, is, is violating or infringing my, my intellectual property. Um, and, you know, as the economy grows, as things get more transparent, we have, we've got to be prepared for being uh, in a society which is more litigious. Already we are seeing uh, more and more uh, uh, civil actions come up against, uh, against companies, more and more consumer actions come in, come in against the companies. So liability in terms of intellectual property is also a question of time. Uh, and we've got to be ready for it when, when we are uh, looking at our policies. And then uh, again, effective customs check uh, when it comes to uh, goods coming in, goods and also services coming in from outside of the country. So, you know, these are some of the realities that companies need to plan according to. Uh, so, within the system, you know, this is uh, what I made, uh, what I think is the, the broad uh, forms on which or the broad basis on which your policies have to be framed on. Uh, you've got to keep innovating because it, it doesn't have to stop. You have to have to uh, come up with new things. You've got to pr uh, protect key innovations. Uh, you know, at least choose some of your key innovations. Go ahead and, and strongly protect those despite a lax IP system. You've got to protect against willful infringements, at least where you know that there is a patent or a company holds a an intellectual property or somebody has a trademark or somebody has a copyright, at least don't, uh, you know, it is unlawful go, to go forward and, uh, and take it uh, and, and commercialize it. Then, of course, uh, there's, a, there's a lot of made in garage. Somebody talked about uh, devil in China or devil around the world yesterday. I think it was Dr. Ganguly. So we've got to protect against, uh, you know, the devils in the garage. Um, 
you know, people just start uh, manufacturing patented products and come up with technology which is, uh, which is, which is proprietary in nature. We've got to manage trade secrets. You know, if we don't have a, a, a law right now, contractually we've got to manage it. Whatever is possible right now, we've got to do, uh, you know, within the, within the uh, four corners of the law which is, uh, which is at place. We've also, uh, you know, it, it's also important uh, to have at least some defensive publications. Uh, we, uh, you know, somebody talked about turmeric and uh, rice and basmati and all that. Uh, had there been... Uh, defensive publications, had there been uh, traditional knowledge which is well documented, published and available online, those uh, situations of wrongly granted patents and then subsequent litigations can be sorted out if the defensive publication is there. IBM is a prime example. They've got, uh, they've got a huge uh, list of, even, even though they file very often, they've still got a huge list of defensive publications, uh, things that they think are not patentable, but still they, they think that somebody else should not be uh, able to make use of. So they go ahead and defensively publish those, those technologies and those, uh, those issues. So defensive publications is something that Indian businesses could also look at, at least um, for uh, technologies that they think is not, it's not possible to patent. I've had some people come in, I've had some clients in fact come in and say, um, what I owned has been patented in China and I asked a question for, for that and this is also happening what you own right now uh, or you know if you've got a design on a, on a, on a semi semiconductor somebody in China would, would you know just file an application and uh, you know you would be uh, at least in a spot of bother thereafter. So as I said IP policy is and IP business strategy is, uh, is, is a very uh, it's, 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 a, it's a diplomacy versus uh, going straight forward and, and fighting that, that person. You have various options. You've got to decide whether you've got to be litigious and you've also got, you've, you've also got to be a lot of, lot, lot, uh, a very diplomatic in nature. A prime example of something is, uh, you know, something of this sort. It's, it's a balancing act. You can either be diplomatic or you can be, you know, go ahead and fight and, uh, and enforce, uh, enforce your rights. So, you know, this is a, a prime example or this is a, a scenario which is similar to, uh, you know, the, 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 the situation that uh, the two of, our, two, two of the gentlemen here have faced and they have, uh, they have decided. So there's a strategy one and the strategy two. It's, it's based upon, and th there is not, no right or wrong in this. It's, it's your decision ultimately how you plan your strategy and how you, uh, you decide upon how to enforce or protect your intellectual property. Uh, four of the things that, uh, that make uh, an essential part of your intellectual property policy and are good tools in deciding uh, your, your future growth and your, uh, your future launches in as far as uh, uh, products is concerned um, have been listed. I'll be discussing each one of them uh, separately. Uh, first of all, FTO, uh, as the, the, the name itself, uh, freedom to operate is, is, is some of a misnomer. There is no absolute uh, freedom to operate. No, nobody will ever stand up and say you have absolute freedom to operate. It is only a minimizing of risk when it comes to, uh, when it comes to launch of a product. There will, there, there will, as, as you know, one of the examples that Miku gives, give, gave was very, very, um, very, very good. Where he said that after 10 years, he looked at a patent and said, okay, this covers cloud computing. Now, he, on the assertion side, you may say, okay, this covers cloud computing. But on the other side, to another person, it may not cover cloud computing. It may just cover a patent on a, it may just cover a computer on a network. But to me, as an assertive party, I, I may say that it, it covers uh, cloud computing. So from a launch perspective, from launching a product perspective, uh, there, is no there is no such thing as absolute freedom to operate. It is only minimizing the risk of infringing unlicensed IP rights of third parties. That, that can be guaranteed at some level. Um, some of the steps that uh, that you've got to take. 
some of the steps that you've got to take is uh, in, in FTO and some basic steps, I, I believe Roshan is to cover uh, FTO in greater detail as well. But some of the steps that you, you've got to take are analyzing the technology. You, what we do is uh, break down the technology into various key features, um, break it down into keywords, um, put them down in, uh, in, a, in an appropriate uh, pattern database, uh, formulate the, the, the series of questions and uh, then go ahead and uh, come up with, uh, with, a, uh, with an exhaustive list of patterns which are inclusive in nature rather than being exclusive so as to cover the freedom to operate and minimizing of the risk aspect. Uh, one has also to be aware that there is always an 18 month uh, lead period when it comes to publication of documents. What I may have uh, filed right now will get published only after about 18 months. And, uh, the, and in between, if you c go ahead and launch a product, so that 18-month uh, period of silence is something that comes in uh, to be very, very uh, crucial in as far as product launches is concerned. Because it takes that much time for a product launch to come in. And then you see that there's a, there's a publication that has come in right after you've launched the product. So that may create a problem at some point of the time or the other. Um, as I said, it should be include rather than exclude. And uh, throughout the product life cycle, you've got to have uh, due diligence which needs to be done. Uh, at the most, it's a risk management tool, FTO, but uh, your risks can be effectively managed. For example, and, and especially for India, uh, we, we have to uh, dwell on a very offline search. Uh, we can search very uh, on, on mostly offline systems. So uh, we have to be careful in as far as uh, searching for Indian patents is concerned and uh, look at it from that perspective. What I tell them, uh, what, what I usually uh, suggest is that if you've got some patent which is relevant in as far as the abstract is concerned, just go ahead and ask for the full text and then uh, analyze the claims. Even for uh, published applications, the claims may take very different forms. We've had clients come up to us and say that um, they would want patents to be uh, uh, drafted in a way and claims to be drafted in a way so as to cover uh, a potential uh, competitors, uh, a potential competitor's uh, product. So they will keep, uh, there are people who will keep track of your, uh, your, your products and your competitors may ask, ask, uh, ask their attorneys to draft the patents in, the, in such a way so as to cover your, your, patent, uh, your products. So you've got to be careful in that uh, aspect as well. Uh, after, you know, what happens after an FTO is done? and you find that you know, you've got a set of applications or you've got a set of patents that, uh, that, are, uh, you know, that, are, uh, that are that are posing a threat to uh, a successful product launch. Um, I've, uh, in, in, this, uh, in, these some of, in the next few slides, I'll be dealing with that. The first option, of course, is uh, just license it. Uh, try and uh, get a license from your competitor if possible. Um, um, you can, um, you know, you, in, in the Indian scenario, you can also apply for a compulsory license uh, and say that the, the application is not being worked, by, worked in India. So, you know, under Section 84, uh, you've got, uh, you've got uh, options available where you can go and ask the patent office for a compulsory license. Uh, or you can just go to the, the, uh, your competitor and say, okay, or just go to the patentee and say that, you know, I, I need, uh, we need to license it in. What what it hampers is in-house uh, is uh, in-house R&D initiatives. Um, there are statutory limitations in India. Uh, one of the sections uh, prohibits, uh, uh, you know, it's actually uh, fostering innovation. One of the sections in India, or the law in India, says that uh, even if you're getting into a patent, uh, into an agreement repatenting, uh, re you uh, cannot provide for provisions. Yeah, you cannot provide for provisions which. Uh, which prohibit innovation within the patenting domain. So even if it's a licensing in uh, that you're doing, uh, you've got to be careful what kind of provisions you put into the contract. Um, you can go in for a cross license, uh, which involves give and take. But uh, then again, uh, reg there are some um, MRTP issues, uh, regulatory issues that you need to be careful about. You can uh, go ahead and uh, go, go in for a pre and post grant uh, opposition in as far as opposing of third party uh, patents is concerned. The patent office uh, 
entertains both pre-grant as well as post-grant oppositions. Uh, you can there are several uh, grounds available to you un under statute, and you can take any of those. Even though it it it, it is uh, the process is uh, is uh, you know is long tedious, but still uh, there is redressal available. You can also go in and you know apply a common law remedy in as far as taking a seek of seeking of a non-assertion agreement, which is uh, primarily a cheap and effective way where you can uh, choose a broad set of technology and uh, have a non-assertion agreement in as far as the technology is concerned. Uh, I, I've already covered seek, uh, seeking of. Uh, of compulsory licensing, it's a statutory uh, a statutory uh, remedy which is available to you under the Patent Act, and uh, you can always go ahead and uh, you know seek for a compulsory license. If you find that a patent which is not being worked in India, an invention, uh, the patent law says um, any patent that is any invention that has been granted a patent has to be worked by the inventor in India within three years of the invention, or periodically after three years of the invention. So you've got to be careful. Uh, and so, so uh, when it comes to, comp and, and if it is not, then you can go, and go ahead and seek a compulsory license. So you can always uh, take advantage of the, uh, the compulsory licensing uh, regime. You can always uh, design around. There are uh, effective uh, methods of designing ar around. You've got to see that uh, all the claim elements uh, or there, are, there, is an, a, a sub, uh, there is a proper designing around of the and modification of the, uh, the process that is taking place or the product that, is, uh, that has to go on. And uh, you can always uh, look at a design around strategy, modify the product accordingly and take it forward. Then uh, the last but not the least, you can just wait and see. Uh, most, in, most of our uh, Indian clients have just uh, you know, gone ahead and launched and then waited and seen and that's uh, something that you can always do. And, uh, but it's, it's a high risk, high gain policy. You can go ahead and uh, you know, if, you're, if you're sued or if some company comes in and, and, uh, and asks for an injunction and is granted one, then that's a problem. Uh, Generally in India, uh, you know, till now it's been all wait and see. We, uh, generally companies go ahead and launch their products and then, you know, see the consequences later. Uh, you know, some of the uh, some of the other options that are available are ab abandoning the project, which is uh, highly not uh, not uh, not recommended. Then you can always go in for a merger or acquisition. So these are just broad policies that are available. There are a variety of uh, forecasting tools um, that, that there are a variety of forecasting tools that uh, Dr. Ganguly and the chairman have said that we've got three minutes, so I'll just uh, hurry up with the next slides. So there are a, a variety of forecasting um, tools that are available in the market. Some very pretty graphs that you can come up with. Some great um, patents are a great source of knowledge. Uh, about what your competitors may be doing. So uh, those, those act as very effective and handy tools for companies to, um, to go ahead and uh, decide their future strategies in as far as uh, both R&D and as well as uh, future product launches is concerned. Uh, um, as I said, there are very pretty graphs that are available these days. Um, what we did was we did a, uh, you know, I just did a case study. The, the first step is to just broaden the technology, look at the technology perspective, uh, divide your, the technology into, into several, uh, in, into, into different levels, and then identify which, which of the levels you may be interested in. For example, uh, you know, I just, we just uh, took, took an example of artificial intelligence and a particular company may be interested in neurobiological methods or computational modeling or neural networks. So, uh, you know, the first level is to, is to decipher the technology, come up with, uh, come up with uh, both on the application level and on the, uh, on, 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 the, on the technical level, on different level, on the different uh, forms and sorts of technology. And thereafter, uh, you could use those, those taxonomies to either do a portfolio analysis of a competitor or portfolio analysis of your, your own company and see what your, where your R&D strengths and where your R&D weaknesses are and, 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 and decide on your R&D strategies as you move along on the basis of those studies. For example, you know, we did a, a, 
a small little case study and uh, you know a company may uh, a company which is in the in the field of technology or um, of telecom may decide that you know uh, they are, they are not uh, they are not as strong in uh, in a particular uh, you know say tdma or wcdma but they are they are really strong in some of the other things so they may decide to uh, they they may decide to uh, tie up with another company which may be in the, in the field of uh, where the, uh, your particular client is is, is strong in uh, uh, some of the r and d initiatives that have been discussed today uh, in, have been discussed in the morning in detail white space analysis is another tool that companies use uh, based on a problem solving model uh, you can come up with uh, identifying the r and d and focus in the right area and gear up for the next level of r and d you could also look at uh, competitive intelligence wherein uh, you look at uh, at identifying the, the the key competitors focus uh, on the areas where uh, you know look at what the competitors are doing and take a key cue uh, from where the next uh, technology can come from uh, in the morning an example of palm was given that palm uh, was uh, was left behind in the by and and you know 90% of the uh, you know the forward looking uh, people have or business people have blackberries right now um, uh, one prime example of a company which is always evolving has been google um, so if uh, i just took a case study and uh, we we've analyzed the the growth of google and probably tried to decipher what google could be coming in as the next uh, or what google could be launching in the next 6 to 12 months and i'll just uh, i'll just demonstrate uh, within the next 3 minutes on how uh, how one can predict and accurately predict what google may be coming in uh, with in the next uh, you know as as we move along now the existing uh, portfolio of google uh, you know it, and this is the first step that you analyze the existing portfolio of a particular company you look at uh, various uh, uh, you look at the exhaustive list of various uh, fields that a particular company may be operating in uh, documents groups uh, maps emails they are coming in with a nexus uh, one which is a uh, a mobile phone uh, uh, they are coming in with calendars google reader youtube so on and so forth we all use google tools in some some form or the other now the next step is uh, just analyze the le latest uh, publications of that uh, that particular company so what we did was uh, you know just analyze the latest 15 generally the set is larger you you take a 6 month to 12 month uh, uh, time frame and you analyze the latest publications from that company uh, you know i just taken a, a shorter uh, step and you know what we analyzed was that a large number of uh, the applications that are at least put in here as yellow um, are being uh, uh, relate to video images and also a lot of use of macros in mobile telephony and also uh, collaborative and collaborative is the key here they are looking at a, a lot of collaborative online videos so uh, you know so we could expect ne the next thing from uh, google stable is uh, a collaboration in as far as uh, online videos is concerned and also you know integration of mobile phone technology with a uh, lot of video and using of macros pre programmed uh, uh, video movement in uh, in the technology as we move forward uh you could also look at an ip landscape of a company and uh, uh, you know look at uh, look at the existing uh, look at the existing uh, uh, look at the existing technologies and take it from there um i'm uh, out of time and out of slides thank you thank you so much